So this is uh, this is the studio where I work. This is my uh, my studio office. This is not where I pour all my resin. This is where a lot of the planning and drawing and painting happens. So Beautiful. I'm so fortunate to have this space. My wife is an artist too, so we converted this whole top floor to uh, studio space for us to work. Jealous. And, jealous, um, jealous. and this is where I work. This is where I spend a lot of my time. Get it all done right here. I've been doing this for about a year now. Um, Is about, that all? It was about a year ago oh, that wow. I started using resin. Oh wow. Um, and, 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 and less than a year using it in this way. And, um, and like I said, I just, you know, I love, I'm a process junkie, I love exploring this. And when I found this, it, it, it seemed like a kind of a, like uh, it was bottomless. You know, mm -hmm. there, was, there was so much, there's so much you could do. In fact, I've gone off in directions with the stuff that I haven't shown because of, it was, I realized at some point it was a distraction. Like, oh, you know, I, I tried doing that. What if I put all this stuff? Okay, you know what? I just need to focus on on what I'm doing. Yeah. But um, but yeah. So so it was digital and then traditional and then and then coming coming to this, which really feels like my own voice. I want to ask you about New York. So you live in New York. I do. What is it about New York? Why why do you work in New York? Why do you live in New York? I was living in San Francisco and I was doing digital work and like uh, uh, video games and stuff like that and. Uh -huh. um, not to poo-poo any, any one city, but I feel like in San Francisco I was spinning my wheels a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do that in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, you come to New York and you have to get serious. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know who's come to New York, whatever they were doing, they took it up, you know, 10, 10 levels. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that was, you know, their writing or if nonprofit not, yeah, or whatever. If not whatever. here, where, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, if you can't survive here if you're not hustling. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, do you thrive on that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I love the hustle. I, I do. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a double-edged sword. Like you know, there's if people say you wouldn't you be more relaxed if you like did something else and had you know, yeah, sure, but I wouldn't be as happy. Like mm -hmm. I love this process of exploration. I love the um, the urgency of it. You know, mm -hmm. like I've got to figure out how to make this work because you know bills are coming and, mm -hmm. and kids and all this other stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting. So these are two of the sketchbooks that I use. I said I started going to this coffee shop and just sitting and drawing every day. And um, this, is, this is what sketchbooks look like. Exactly. Um, so this is when I was starting to plan out some of these pieces. Not actually, this was sort of before resin. I was just sort of thumbnailing out some ideas for, for pieces. This is kind of what ended up to be, as the piece downstairs. Um, you know, just all kinds of different sketches and ideas. My wife's sleeping. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> these are all thumbnails that eventually may end up in um, as pieces and pieces of resin. So this was this was this is what ended up as the one down downstairs. That was the it initial, just that's where it all started. That was the initial thumbnail, yeah. So interesting. So you have these little thumbnails. Yeah. You do half a billion of them and then you yeah. come up with some neat stuff and then you take it into Photoshop where you make you sort of I guess flesh out the idea a little bit more. Yeah. And Photoshop works in layers, and then you come yeah. back to the canvas, and again you work in layers. And it's it's this really interesting process too, because because I'll I'll work and I'll work and I'll work and I'll go, okay, I think we're in a good place, yeah. and then I'll pour the resin on and go, oh no, this needs okay, There's yeah, a lot of stuff here <laughs> that needs to get fixed, and that's when yeah. the that's when I started realizing that I needed more and more layers, and then it just became this process of of finding ways to have these layers interact with each other and um, different kinds of. Uh, brush strokes and different kinds of effects, uh, different kinds of materials using pencil and different kinds of paint, oil and acrylic and um, what else do I have in here? Gold leaf, lots of gold leaf. So awesome. So what you're telling me, basically what I just heard you say is that this whole thing which everyone looks at and goes like, wow, that is so awesome. Like how, how did you come up with that? You're just telling me that it was like a series of accidents and a series of what is, explorations. I mean, is, isn't, and, that, isn't that what art is? Just I think a, you. Exactly. Just a, series, just a series of really <laughs> fortunate accidents. I think. There you go, right? I think it's how you evolve as an artist is that you is that you learn how to make the most out of your accidents. If you don't, <laughs> then you're just doing the same thing kind of over and over again. And yeah. if you're not willing to make accidents, then you're not willing to grow. So if you want to be an artist, it's all about originality all the time. And so it's always sort of that road less traveled, problem solving, you know, relying on uh, whatever you see in that moment, push and pull mm -hmm. and, and responding to whatever it is that you've just done and what does it need now and what's exactly. the next step, what's the next step, what's the next step. No, right? exactly. I never have a 100% clear idea of how these are going to turn out. And sometimes they, they're done before I know it. The piece over here, you know, I, uh, 
I, kept, I looked at for probably two months before I said, you know what, actually, I think it just is done. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's actually how it is. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of these pieces, like I have a 20 pound paperweight in the other room, uh, <laughs> which is sort of a waiting uh, resolution yeah. <laughs> later. You know, it's just, I got to the place with the piece, I said, I just don't know, I just don't know where to take it. Yeah. You know, because it, it's, not, like. it's, not <laughs> it's not a road map, you know, it's not, it's not a set path. It's not like, okay, Google Maps, tell me how to get to the end of the painting. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's a piece over there that I, I like, there's parts of it that I like. There was something that I really liked about it. I couldn't figure out how to get there at the time, and so I stopped, mm -hmm. put it aside, worked on something else. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna go back probably in the next month and, and build on top of that. And what's interesting about the resin, as we said before, is that you'll be able to see that process underneath mm -hmm. um, and so I love that story I love that part of the, the process of the art and you don't get to see that in a lot of other kinds of art yeah because it covers it up it, it gets yeah. covered up sometimes you know there's like uh, Caravaggio was sort of famous for leaving some of his paintings kind of just unfinished I mean they were beautifully unfinished his mm -hmm. under paintings were you know masterpieces but mm -hmm. you look at his paintings and sometimes in the corners you're like that's just umber like he just laid that in yeah. and didn't touch it yeah you know but with this process I love that you can actually see each step along the way Yes. Um, on some on some level, mm -hmm. yeah. I was so meticulous for so long, and you, when you start out as an artist, especially as a figurative artist, you're so caught up in like getting it right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, when I when I finally got to this, sometimes there's just not any. You don't have any control over it. And I kind of love the freedom of that, you mm -hmm. know, of, of pouring this stuff out and looking at it and going, well, that happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what are we gonna do now? Like, yeah. you know, I need to make this into a thing, or or, or I want to make it into a thing, and and finding ways to make those those things that you didn't expect, those beautiful oopses, mm -hmm. and making them something that's really yours and beautiful. It's just, mm -hmm. it's been, it's been really exhilarating for me. That's so, I love hearing that. I'm so, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, <laughs> me too. You ask about, you know, how do I feel about selling work? I mean, I think it's a, a necessity. Yeah. Not just to pay your bills, but also to build your reputation as an artist and also like, to evolve, like if I have the work sitting around from, I keep a couple pieces that you can see in the living room. There's a few, I have one from art school that's up on the wall that mm -hmm. I really like, but I don't keep all of it. Um, and part of it is I just, I feel like I want to clear out space for something new. Mm -hmm. um, so it's as much about the financial aspect of it as it is about make as evolving as a, as a person, as an artist. Interesting. So it's, it's, uh, you don't, you don't have any like nostalgia tied to it or um, feeling like you want to keep it around as a testament to your curriculum vitae or anything like that? I, I have an interesting relationship with nostalgia. I, I'm, I'm very happy with a very fond memory. Yeah. Um, I find that sometimes having the object around can kind of, it can kind of not tarnish the memory exactly, but it, it can kind of get stale mm -hmm. in a way. But, but that, you know, memory is so great because you can just get better and better and you know and, and it can be a total lie and it doesn't matter yeah so you kind of you cut ties with it and in, in a sense it freed you to explore other things well yeah I mean people talk about like when people are obsessing over past relationships you know until you actually let go of that thing that's sitting inside you taking up space you don't have space for something new mm -hmm. um, nobody wants to go on a date and talk about somebody's exes right yeah People ask me about, you know, how do you find your style? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a style. I want to find something cool that people like. I'm like, well, you don't actually get to do that. Someone <laughs> else has to come and say, this is all fine. I mean, I can't tell you how many artists, I work with a lot of artists for the, for the gallery, and people come to me and say, look at all this stuff. And I say, this is all fine, but these three pieces are, you know, are really different and really amazing. And if you can show me, you know, portfolio of this work mm -hmm. that's you mm -hmm. and I've, I have a number of artists who have, who have gone on to like go and do that work and they're you know they're, they're very successful not to pat my own self on the back but just to say yeah it's, it's, it's hard to do for objectivity. yourself Absolutely, it's so hard right? to do for yourself yeah and sometimes because as, you, as we were saying right like you're making art and you're kind of just you're exploring everything and you're kind of going down all these different uh, uh, paths and yeah. it, you know you're just you're coming up with ideas and you're just kind of going with it and rolling with it and and then you wind up with some stuff yeah and it's kind of like okay well now, which is the good stuff, and which well, yeah, is the well, stuff we, I want to do more of, or which is the stuff I want to keep, and, yeah. and so on and so forth. I think as long as you just keep doing stuff, then you're on the right track. Yeah, right? well, that's true, <laughs> and I think you need community, uh, you know. And I yeah. think I don't think that work evolves. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think it really evolves in a vacuum. I think that if you sit down, mm -hmm. um, you can sit down and make the same mistakes for the rest of your life and not learn anything. Mm -hmm. you know, there's there's this idea of um, deliberate. I forget who coined the term, but deliberate practice, where you 
you, know, you, you do something and then you, you try to objectively sit back and say, okay, so like what's working and what's not working. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do that to a point mm -hmm. on your own, but it's important to have other people, other voices to come and say, well, you know, I was looking at this other thing last week that you would never have heard of and, it remind, and that might take you in an, another direction that yeah. starts to all kind of, all these different directions and ideas come together in the pot of, the melting pot of you and come out as, as your art. But I don't think you get to actually do that on, on your own. I've been very, very fortunate and grateful to have my wife who's an artist, my mentor, and, and, a, and a bunch of friends and a bunch of people who um, are still my friends for whatever reason. Um, and, and we show each other work and, mm -hmm. we, and we push each other, you know, we push each other to do better and to, and to do more. Mm -hmm. and like I said, I, I, I teach and, and one of the things that we work on is actually how to, how to look at and talk about your work. So I'll ask other students to, to talk about other students' work. Mm -hmm. or, you know, what do you, what do you think is working here? Tell me one thing you think is working really well and one thing you would improve. But don't mm -hmm. just say, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you would do. Yeah. How would you solve this problem? It's all about problem solving. I, yes, it is. And I think that I think that is you know what I never really I never really kind of thought about this, but yeah, I think it's true that when you're talking about the art, when you're talking about what you've done, you're having to identify things in any way because you have to explain it with words mm -hmm. instead of just making something with paint and colors and whatever. So now you have to bring language to it. And when you bring language to it, you are describing it in ways that may help you identify what's working and what's not and where, where do you go next so the hard thing about being an artist especially if you're a figurative artist is that anyone can look at a figurative painting and tell you if it's crappy yeah right <laughs> like anyone who we know go, it doesn't look good we know if it doesn't look good what yeah. they can't tell you is why necessarily yes. mm -hmm. um, and 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 as an artist it's our job to sort of explore these ideas mm -hmm. um, but the tough part is that we don't necessarily know why either so we have you know we're, we're all making it all up as we go along mm -hmm. um, and so you know uh, we have to go through and try these different things. Is it working? Is it not working? And we can come up with reasons, mm -hmm. but you know, in, in the end, is does you know, does it work or does it not work? And yes, that's, and that's it. And there's yeah. there's lots of rules. Do you like rules. it? Do you not like it? Yeah. And if you and if you and if it, if you like it, can you do it a hundred more times? Because you've got a body of work, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and and slightly differently, <laughs> and evolve, and be amazing. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Art isn't just about here's how to make the picture better, here's how to make the picture better, but it's about like, what do you do when you're like dog died and your boyfriend broke up with you and like, you, like you're like you worried about paying rent, you've got to move and like all this other stuff that happens in your life that goes into this work. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think having someone like a real mentor is so valuable. Rebecca's the person that I'll text and say like, I feel like I should stop making art, like I'm not good at this anymore. And she's like, okay, relax, we'll mm -hmm. have the talk and we'll move past it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so valuable about, about that. Yeah, I think artists like helping other artists. Right? I think I think many do. I've met a few who don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, People, yeah, I think I've, it takes confidence to, um, to give artists, other artists, tips. Right, to say like, well, here's what works and here's what I've done and here's how I do things, you know, to, just to, because um, those people, those artists that are saying like, well, I don't want to share, I don't want to share because I don't want to be copied. Well, you have to have the confidence to know that you are, you do what you do and because you're you, no one else can do what you do. Exactly. So go ahead and show people. Honestly, like, it, you know, it, it takes courage, right, mm -hmm. to share these things, but I think it's smart. Um, for two reasons, I think that, uh, maybe two reasons, I can think of one and, and I may come up with another before the end of the, my sentence, but I think it's smart to share these things because it builds community, you know, and, yeah, and, 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 and it builds friendships and these are the things that can make or break a career. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, you know, the other thing is um, it builds your own name too, like mm -hmm. if you're out there sharing stuff, people will say, you know, oh, uh, you know what, I, I heard Mark was talking about this the other day, he's got a YouTube about it or something, and people come to you, right. and if you start to build a reputation as a resource, that's just another feather in the cap for, for people sort of hearing about you and your work. Mm -hmm. There's lots of really great artists who do really great work who you won't hear about because they're grumpy and don't share anything. And frankly, it's just like, I mean, we, a lot of artists you know, deal with, I mean, we're like we're putting our hearts on the line, right? We're putting our stuff out there, and it's, it's a lot less nerve-wracking to do with somebody else. Every project I've ever done that's gone well, I've, been, I've, I've brought other people in, or I've been work, or someone's brought me in, and it's been a group effort. Um, and I, and I, and I, it's funny. I mean, I do this work on my own, but there's there's nothing about this that, that, that doesn't feel like a group effort to me. Like there's there's so much influence and so many people who have been a part of my my journey that that this is absolutely a culmination of all of those people's work, and I'm just grateful for all of it.